Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I just want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you that has subscribed and liked and shared my video. I've had such lovely feedback and really positive messages and comments from people that I do and don't know. So I just want to say I'm really, really thankful for everybody that has reached out and messaged me. It's made me feel loads better about sharing this information. <laughs> Um, please, if you are new, do subscribe. I will leave my Instagram link below as always, so you can go and follow me there. And yeah, just thank you so much. So in this video, I'm going to talk a bit more about where I currently am in my bypass journey. I have actually booked my um, surgery for May of 2020, and I'm now actually on a pre-pre-op diet. So I will explain that further in just a second. I just want to briefly explain what a gastric bypass is for those of you that don't know. It's essentially where your so your stomach is obviously from your esophagus, food pipe, and then it's your stomach. You cut the surgeon cuts all your stomach away, leaving you just like an egg-sized pouch, and then he brings part of the small intestine up and attaches it. So now when you eat, you bypass um, the other type of digestion and you digest food a lot quicker and in a different way, which thus causes you to lose weight. It is a very serious surgery. It's life-changing. I will forever now be on lots of different medications to get multivitamins and minerals and that because obviously I will be lacking through the lack of food I'm being able to eat. I had to have vitamin B12 injection every three months for the rest of my life. I can only drink 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after a meal. I can never chew chewing gum again. Um, it's very really like serious things. It's, a, it's not something you do lightly. Um, but it is definitely something that I've considered over many years and it's definitely the right decision for me. So I just want to touch a bit about the pre-op diet. So when you have this surgery, your stomach actually sits under your liver. So to get to your stomach, you need to shrink your liver. So that's why you do what's called a pre-op diet. Now the pre-op diet, the one that I'm following, is two slim fast shakes a day and two yogurts per day. That is it. That's all I'm going to have for six to eight weeks, depending on how long my surgeon would like me to do it for. I'm thinking eight, just from how much I weigh, but I will let you know when I find out on the 28th of February, which is when I next see my nutritionist. Um, and that's all you can have until your surgery. And if you think, oh, I'm just going to have one last meal, oh, it doesn't matter. It does. You will reverse everything because the salt and the fats will make your, your liver expand again. And... You want it to be as small as possible so you can have the best chances of obviously having the surgery. I'm actually currently also on a diet before the diet because when I went and actually went back for my... Because I originally looked at it obviously in the July 2019 and I went back in the January 2020. I'm heavier than what I were, which was fine. The study of the surgery, but it would also cost me a lot more money. It was then looking at £14,000 rather than £11,000. And I think paying £11,000 is already a lot of money to be paying. So I'm actually currently on a diet where I have um, two slim fast shakes a day and one meal that consists between 500 to 800 calories. Um, sometimes I'll have the one slim fast and a larger meal or just it varies, but I have to have less than basically a thousand calories per day. Um, I will actually post on my Instagram stories of like what I eat in the day so you can kind of get a rough idea of what I'm roughly having. Obviously these meals are also got to be quite healthy. I'm having a lot of homemade Chicken kebabs is what I'm living off. Uh, lots of salad, lots of chicken, protein, you know. Um, so then let's talk about the diet after the surgery. After the surgery, you, you're essentially a newborn baby. You are on liquids for four weeks. Just again, the same as before, like the, the shakes or like broths, really thin soups. They have to go through a um, sieve is how thin they have to be. Then you go on to like mushy food, so like mashed potatoes, um, blended wheat, a mix of milk, um, tuna, but also blended. Like it has to be high in protein, but very, very mushy. Then you'll go on to like soft foods. So this way you can start incorporating like meat, so like shepherd's thighs, fish pies. Still quite soft in texture, but you can start to get more of a variety type in. And then after that, so come this now week eight and nine, you'll be on solids. And again, when you're choosing solids, it's not just, okay, now you can have Sunday dinner. No, no, no. It's, you've got to try like boiled chicken and then roasted chicken and then grilled chicken that get the texture. Obviously, it always has to be healthy. So, you know, cut off the fat, no skin, that kind of thing. 
it's also really important once you get to the weeks eight and nine when you can have the solid food that you don't have the mushy food because obviously you want to fill your stomach if you're having the mushy food it's more likely to slip through sounds lovely but then you're not going to get that full feeling and you're going to your mind's going to think that you're hungry again you're going to eat and then you've got risk of it being trapped in your esophagus which i just can't even begin to think what that must feel like and of course vomiting i've been told to be warned that there is a lot of vomiting in the beginning a lot of regurgitation a lot of ooh, your taste buds completely change your textures everything like that it's like how it's like you're a newborn baby you're reborn everything's going to be different so i'm really looking forward to that and um, there are a lot of risks associated with this surgery and i'm not going into this with my eyes shut i really have looked at all the different outcomes and options and i've listened to the different risks the risks are quite low for what you would expect for such an invasive surgery it is done through keyhole um but they they are low this surgery has been done now 40 years it's as common as a breast ornamentation which i can guarantee you know somebody who's had a uh you know a boob, a boob job um but yeah there are a lot of risks There's some smaller risks like vanity risks such as hair loss which i am absolutely dreading um but there are such larger risks like gallstones and obviously leaks from where they've like cut away the new stomach um blood vessels being tampered with when they're going in and out um blood clots so i have to have some lovely stockings made <laughs> and there are there are but obviously that's, i think i'll leave that for you to um look into if that's something you want to do i'm not going to bore you with the facts um but yeah so i've now done that part and i'm booked to see my nutritionist again on the 28th of february which i'll get weighed again and i'm hoping to have lost some weight from this hopefully i've lost about a stone and a half we know that the pre-op diet will just get rid of the other three stone that i want to lose before the op i'm speaking to my actual surgeon on the 1st of march he will then book me in to go and do other tests so this test you have to do i actually have sleep apnea which again is on my weight so they want they need to know about things like that for my surgery um i have to have stockings measured as i mentioned previously to wear so to try and reduce getting obviously blood clots um you have to have like tests to make sure you're not a sepsis carrier or there's lots of other aspects and i've said we'll see my nutritionist the right to show that i'm on the right path and that i'm not crying myself to sleep every night because i'm starving <laughs> Um, so please do like and subscribe. I hope this video was informative for you. And uh, if there's anything you do want to see, please do comment. I am thinking about doing a video about the finance side of things because I say my uh, that's what took me so long to book the surgery. But it will be very short and sweet, so I may just do it on my Instagram and save it as a highlight. But let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. Um, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you.